Hi, this is Amanda Palmer. This is just a little behind the scenes documentary of the voicemail for Jill video. We're here in my apartment in the Cloud Club at Boston, which still looks kind of like it always looked. I've been in this apartment since 1999 and I held on to it. And if you've seen the video or as you're about to see the video, you'll understand why it was important that we made this video in Boston. A lot of my friends are in it. I'm working with a brand new director named Amber Seeley, and I just wanted to give you guys a little peek into where we made it, how we made it, what it felt like to make it, because it's a really intense emotional video. This is a dark. Remember the grays, blues, blacks, right now? Keep looking right where you're looking, Kate. Up, up. Stay there for a second. One, two. And then just turn and bury your face in the pillow a little bit, like smush your face in the pillow. And here with Amber, the director, and Kate, who's playing Jill. Every music video is different. Sometimes I'll send a song to a director and say, What do you see? What are you thinking? And for this song, I had a really specific vision but without a lot of particulars. I just knew that I wanted this to be a pretty literal journey of a woman going through a city to an abortion clinic. Specifically what I wanted was for the person watching the video to put themselves in the shoes of what it feels like to be that woman seeing what you see when you're, when that's what you're doing. Any woman who's had an abortion, all the signs of the universe start looking different to you. Babies look different, mothers look different, old people look different, like everything just is seen through this filter of this massive choice that you're making, for better or worse, and your brain goes into all these crazy places. And I, and I was like, how do we make a video that shows someone what that feels like. So I handed that off to Amber. And then we started a long set of phone conversations trying to figure out how to make that. Mm -hmm. Originally you told me that idea. And then if you remember, I had I was like, oh, and this and this. And you were like, no, this is really, <laughs> <laughs> which is great. Cause it's like, it should be, if you, you know, if it was the, the, the vision was born in your head, then it, we should honor that vision. Johnny, if you just sit up again a little bit. I love it. I'm loving the belly rubbing, but yeah. We're halfway through shooting, by the way, right now. We're at the end of day one, so you haven't actually done the walk yet, mm -hmm. but you you know what you're about to do. Yeah. How does it feel like doing this? Um, It's been really powerful. I mean, with the shooting today and the, even just the literal sex scene and all of that, and the idea of representing a really wide array of like the sexual experience and you know just the different power dynamics that are embedded in every moment of that exchange and what it means on like a macro level um, that's been a beautiful thing to explore mm -hmm. Jill will come up the steps Amanda and you know maybe a couple of you it's not like you swarm over but it's 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 you know a couple of you you take notice she's here she's the person that you've all gathered to offer love and support for right and Amanda will give her a big hug here and then and I will just like kind of throw direction out at you guys up with a collective cheer that is like a cheerleading cheer. It can be about anything, but it's got to involve something slightly physical, and you all have to like learn it and figure it out together. Okay. Oh, we're going to discuss it. You're discussing oh, it. Ready? Go. Ahead. And, and, and you guys are going to Okay. okay. Whatever. Scream, Same Jill, type. very loudly. <laughs> yes. All right. It's a chant. Ready? <laughs> Go. Cheer! It made me 
so happy last night to be in this room full of people who were actually experiencing this sort of imaginary fantasy thing that I'm talking about in the song, which is you have an experience like that. You have to go to an abortion alone. You, you know, you feel unheard and unloved and unheld. And like all of a sudden you, that you throw open the doors and there's, you know, there's your tribe of friends there to throw you an abortion party and somehow mark your experience in some, you know, unthought of way. Close your eyes, and I want you to think about one thing that is special or revealing that should matter a lot to you, and it should be slightly revealing when you talk about it. Okay? Are going to share first? When I was eight, nine years old, my 27-year-old son died of a drug overdose. That was by far the hardest thing I've ever been through. And what was his name? Benjamin. 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 Oh, Benjamin. 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 You guys would have loved him. He's like, oh. What was so incredible about last night, you know, listening to these strangers sharing their stories with one another, you know, including one woman who came up to me and told me that she'd had an abortion and that this felt really healing for her, like this was giving her this beautiful kind of closure is that the the video itself and the shooting last night it it was the party it, it wasn't like a you know even my imagination i imagined us shooting this kind of fictional thing but it it wound up being real and all of those strangers and patrons who got cast as extras to come play the part at this party we we wound up sharing these really intimate details of our lives and holding the space for each other and it turned into this actual real holding healing experience and while i didn't plan for that i think a lot of my subconscious choices in art lately are leading me to places like that where the actual process of making the art helps me and helps the people making the art and is in itself a kind of a real beautiful thing.